Well, hello, my name is Troy Deschard, EMS Captain with Palm Beach County Fire Rescue. I work out of the 2nd Battalion on Sea Shift. Today I'm going to do a quick little training tutorial on the surgical cricothyrotomy as it relates to an adult patient and uh, we'll touch just briefly on uh, pediatric patients at the end of the scenario. When we're doing a surgical cric or cricothyrotomy, we want to do these on patients where we can't manage their airway or uh, ventilate them by any other means. We can't place an ET tube or an eye gel or even our BLS airways as far as just a BVM with uh, oral and nasal airways are ineffective with properly ventilating the patients. A lot of these patients that we would do this on are going to have severe facial injuries or injuries to their neck or throat, some laryngeal trauma, um, or possibly uh, like an upper airway obstruction um, where we would have to make the cut lower um, than the obstruction to uh, bypass the, uh, the upper airway. What we use at Palm Beach County Fire Rescue, we use the Quick Fix um, Cricothyrotomy Kit. This is for adults um, age 13 and greater um, or uh, with signs of puberty. And for uh, pediatric patients 12 years and under, we have the Quick Fix Junior. Um, inside the Quick Fix Kit um, has everything that you need to perform the skill. Um, you have your cut down um, Shiley tube, uh, which is, uh, has a stylet. It's a little bit smaller than your ET tube, but it does have a cuff on the end so that you can inflate that. You have that. Um, also in the kit comes a pair of hemostats that uh, would be useful for opening up the trachea once we make the cut. And of course, your scalpel and a 10 milliliter sy uh, syringe to attach uh, to the cuff of the uh, Shiley tube. Um, so we'll go ahead and, and start the skill. Um, as always, when you're uh, performing this procedure, the, any type of advanced airway procedure, you should be wearing a minimum of PPE of gloves and eye protection. For this procedure, uh, oftentimes it, it could become messy. I recommend wearing trauma sleeves as well as full facial protection uh, for BSI. Um, we would have all of our equipment assembled. We would have our patient properly positioned um, and we would prepare them adequately per protocol with uh, any sedation um, and pre-medications that would need to be given. Um, once we've uh, decided that we need to perform a surgical cricothyrotomy, uh, the procedure itself should move fairly quickly. Um, I would recommend having uh, an assistant, uh, more than one person to, to assist you with this. Um, this should be a two-person job. However, we, kinda, we always train, and for the purpose of this uh, training session here, it will just be, uh, will be just me. Okay, so once we're, um, we're ready to begin the skill, we need to make sure that our patient has been properly positioned, and we have all of our equipment assembled that will include our suction, and we're going to note and try to find our landmarks. The landmarks commonly taught are uh, Hill Valley Hill, uh, in the center of the throat, um, and our goal will be to cut that cricothyroid membrane, which is in the valley between the two hills. Once we've noted our landmarks, we're gonna go ahead and hold the skin taut to hold it in place and prevent any miscuts. And then we're gonna sterilize the skin with our alcohol swabs or betadine solution. Once those are done, it's very important that we not uh, continue to touch the site and, and contaminate it further. As we begin the skill, we're gonna go ahead and take our scalpel and in our dominant hand, make a series of vertical incisions until we've punctured through the cricothyroid membrane. Once we do this, you can anticipate some bleeding. You take your scalpel and secure it, and with your assistant ready, you should have aggressive and continuous suctioning with this skill just to, to help aid you in clearing the secretions. Once your scalpel is secured, your assistant will give you your hemostats, which are used to help open up the trachea. And then once you've got your landmark, you'll quickly um, insert your Shiley tube, your Crike tube into the trachea until it buries to the hub, injecting 10 milliliters of air into the trachea to secure it into the cuff, pulling this out. Now we need to confirm our placement as we would any other advanced airway by attaching your end tidal CO2 filter line set as well as a HEPA filter and ventilating the patient with a BVM. 
We're going to listen for lung sounds and confirm that we have equal lung sounds as well as a visible chest rise. And then our gold standard is also um, noting that we have an end tidal CO2 reading with a box-like waveform. Um, once we have confirmed that the crike tube is in fact in the trachea, we're going to go ahead and secure it with our bands that come with the crike tube. We're going to go around the neck and secure it, keeping in mind not to tie it too tightly that it cuts off any circulation to the neck. And then we would ventilate our patient per protocol. Of course, following the sequence of uh, the DSI, this patient would call for um, post-intubation or post-airway management sedation as well, um, being mindful not to, uh, to, to leave any of that out. The only thing that would be different here, if this was a pediatric patient, the equipment is slightly different. We would perform a needle cricothyrotomy, which is done with the Quick Fix Junior Kit. Inside the kit comes a 14 gauge needle, and that needle is inserted in a downward direction in the exact same locations as the adult Hill Valley Hill through the cricothyroid membrane, and then we would ventilate the patient uh, through the 14 gauge needle. Again, that's for pediatric patients uh, 12 years old and younger. That's cricothyrotomies and needle cricothyrotomies in a nutshell. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Troy Deschard, EMS Captain with Palm Beach County Fire Rescue.